fair weather wishy washy. <laughs> you lost me. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and welcome to yet another talking head video, this time about Tron. And this is because, well, the comments have been full of talk about Tron. What do you think of Tron? So on and so forth. I don't think that the people that are trying to get me to talk about Tron are going to be happy with what I have to say about Tron. But first, we're going to talk about what it is, what it tries to solve, and how it's trying to solve it. Before we get into that, if you guys are interested in joining the Rocket Chat to have a spam and scam free place to chat with other crypto enthusiasts, including myself, hit the join button down below the channel. Once joined for $1.99, you can hit the membership tab and go down and click the secret registration URL for Rocket Chat. All right, hopping into it. What is Tron? Is it a transaction coin or an application coin? That's the first question I always ask. This is basically the difference between Bitcoin, which would be a transaction coin, or at least how I key term it. And then there is things like Ethereum, which are application coins. That's where you build applications on top of the coin, or of course, deploy smart contracts or assign tokens to assets, etc. In the case of Tron, it is an application coin. So it's going up in the category with things like Ethereum and Polkadot. There you go. Now, here's the question I can't really quite sort out completely. Is it a multi-chain or single chain? What do I mean by this? ETH 1.0 is a single chain. There's a single blockchain, transactions are added to the chain and so on. That's where the record is held as far as the ledger. Now, as far as application coins go, they are now moving for the most part into some sort of multi-chain. In the case of ETH 2.0, they're gonna have 64 shards and basically that is going to be separate in individual blockchains keeping records of stuff and basically that allows it to be more scalable in the case of polka dot it's using pair chains and pair threads to become more scalable and that's how they do it in the case of tron i do not see them doing that they don't appear to have sh anything that's equivalent to shards or anything that's equivalent to pair chains or pair threads it appears for the most part that it is a single chain and uh that that is outside of different modules so the way tron works is it uses different modules to solve things like storage and then their their token system and so on so you have like tron and then you have sun so it kind of has different ways to interact with the main chain that enable it to be faster than say something like ethereum but it hasn't gone into the full scalable mode as far as i can tell now that's the big question i had so i popped onto twitter and i said yo am i missing something tron says it's more scalable than ethereum how and pretty much the answer I got, and we have quite a few followers, we have like 7,300 followers. I, when I asked that question, I also tagged Tron and was trying to get an answer from somebody that's a fanboy of Tron or from the team members or something along those lines. Fact of the matter is none of them would respond. The only people that respond said scalability is a lie. It's just a marketing term. So I don't see it. I can't find anybody that can show it to me. So as far as I can tell, it doesn't have the scalability of something like ETH 2.0 or Polkadot. So that's going to be a knockoff in my category here for Tron, especially because they advertise. They advertise that they are scalable and they're not scalable. I have a problem with that. Okay. They're not as scalable as a solution that uses pair chains, pair threads or shards just by nature, okay? So let's talk about the backend development. Have they done anything different here? Yes and no. Primarily Tron is going to still be Solidity. It is a fork of Ethereum and a fork of Ethereum Solidity language. This could be seen as a positive or a copy paste of Ethereum. I'll let you be the judge. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. The rest of the language syntax is compatible, of course, with Solidity. So TVM to EVM, TVM being Tron Virtual Machine to EVM being Ethereum Virtual Machine, they're compatible back and forth. So that could be a positive, right? Or it could just be a copy pasta. Execution environments. So 
Tron Virtual Machine is the execution environment. They call it a TVM, like we mentioned. It is basically the same execution environment that ETH uses. So we're talking about a single execution environment here. Once again, as far as I can tell, tweeted, tried to get some information from some people. If I am missing something, because I feel like as much as people talk this thing up, I feel like I'm missing something. I'm not going to lie because to me, this is still a, you know, uh, it still has the same problems that ETH1 has and I, I'm confused. So TVM initially forked from EVM and can connect seamlessly with the existing Solidity smart contract. So once again, it is basically if you are wanting to migrate between essentially Tron and Ethereum, it's made easier from the developer's perspective. So different from ga the gas mechanism though on EVM, operations and transactions in smart contracts on TVM are free. So this is important. This is where Tron sets itself apart finally from Ethereum. And that is that essentially it means that development costs are lower on Tron than they are on Ethereum because basically the operations of transactions and smart contracts on their execution environment are free so and no trx is consumed so that is a good thing that's a positive and i wanted to mention that that was what we're looking at there now governance so every account in tron network can apply and have the opportunity to become a super representative and here's the thing so super representatives kind of move us into the consensus mechanism but what you need to know about them for governance is that that's the only way for any governance to take place. This is the argument that a lot of people that are against Tron have for it being centralized. And that's because you have a limited amount of candidates. Another additional thing to this that's kind of a downside is that whenever you apply to be a super representative, there are 9,999 Tron that are burned. Now, last time I checked, this is anywhere from four to $600, depending on the day and the price of the Tron. And those are burned and gone forever. So you don't get to keep those in your little super representative wallet that gets burned and done. Now, why do they do that? Of course, in a lot of <laughs> projects, whenever you hear the term burned, it means that it is a form of price control. So typically, at least how I read it, is if somebody says they're burning tokens or we're burning, it is a way to control the price. We talked about this in my Uniswap video, which I did have some tokens that were getting burned when you added liquidity. And the reasoning for that was to essentially encourage people to hold that token. It's really no different here as far as like the reason it's used, in my opinion, what, uh, uh, however anybody else sees it or however they want to advertise it, okay. But in my opinion, it's a form of price control and that's it. You deal with that however you want to deal with it. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Is price control via burning fees and so on and so forth, is that a good thing in your opinion or is that a bad thing? I'm still kind of up in the air on it. Like I said, I do hold some tokens that, that use this or practice that form of, I guess, earning fees or price control. So that gets us into the consensus mechanism, which is DPOS, standing for Delegated Proof of Stake. The Tron consensus mechanism uses, of course, DPOS system in which 27 super representatives that we mentioned earlier produce blocks for the network every six hours TRX account holders who freeze their accounts can vote for a sec selection of super representative candidates with the top 27 candidates deemed the super representatives. Voters may choose super representatives based on criteria such as projects that are sponsored by super representatives and or rewards distributed by to voters. So, geez, this is dumb. So, Voters basically choose super representatives based on essentially super representative projects as well as whether or not or how much that super representative is going to reward uh, voters. So this is where things get really weird and funky. This to me like reeks of manipulation 
I don't like it, but from how I understand it is that if you lock up your Tron, you can vote in basically different super representatives and that means that it's potentially the bag holders or the large whales can vote in whichever super representatives they want every single time. There's no, it doesn't seem to be a randomness and it seems like voters choose it based on either projects sponsored by super representatives, which means super representatives have total control, right? Of what projects they decide are worthy and which projects aren't. And then also you can pay out the voters. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you can pay out the voters as a super representative with more rewards than say like another one, keeping you at the top to get chosen more. Uh. Okay. Hmm. All right. So fees, there are three types of fees, normal transaction fees, cost bandwidth points. Users can use the free daily bandwidth points, which is 5,000 or freeze TRX to obtain more. When bandwidth points are not enough, TRX will be used directly from the sending account. The TRX needed is the number of bytes times 10 sun. So the second type of fees is smart contracts cost energy, but will also need bandwidth points for transact the transaction to be broadcast and confirmed. The bandwidth cost is the same as above. So we talked about the bandwidth cost. And then finally, all query transactions are free. It doesn't cost energy or bandwidth. Now, so essentially you have one which costs energy and bandwidth. Then you have two which costs bandwidth. And then you have three which doesn't cost anything, right? And that's those queries, which is a good thing. This is good for developers that the queries don't cost anything because once you start charging the developers, it's hard to get developers to, you know, develop because it makes it harder on them because it costs too much money. This is the problem ETH has had actually. It's expensive to develop on Ethereum. I've talked to some developers about this. It was interesting. It's like, it's kind of difficult. There's a barrier to entry there. So final thoughts on Tron. <laughs> to me, it seems like it is a copy pasta of Ethereum that has essentially decreased the fees and the development cost or obviously for, for developers and decreased the fees across the board, which is good. However, it hasn't solved scalability and their proof of stake mechanism is outdated and appears to really encourage centralization, which is against one of the principles of crypto. Just go back to the Bitcoin white paper. Obviously being a principled man in the crypto space can be a little bit difficult, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.